Hello there, my name is Sixo, but more on that later, as now it's time to make some waves with this guy, who is the latest unofficial Transformers effort from everyone's favourite third party company, Fans Tour. Uh, hang on. Been spending most of our lives living in a robot paradise. <laughs> yes, well, anyway, regardless of whatever's written on the box, this is very much still the Fans Toy Soundwave we've all been waiting for, and boy, have we been waiting. Especially as the first tease for this thing dates all the way back to 2012, making this one of the longest chest dating third party products of all time. With that acknowledged, let's not waste another minute before we check it out. Although before we begin, I should mention that today's review is brought to you by TF Source, so I'll throw a link to their site in the video description below. I'd also be very grateful if you could leave me a like for this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also in the description is a link to my Patreon, where in exchange for your support, you can get access to a ton of perks, including exclusive galleries and early access to videos such as this. Finally, there's a link to my Redbubble store, where you can pick up a huge range of different designs, including loads of my photos across all kinds of different merch. Anyway, here is Acoustic Wave in his box, and no doubt the first thing you'll notice is that lovely artwork, which pays very close homage to the original tease for this release from nine years ago, despite the fact that the toy itself has been through a huge amount of development and changes since then, as it originally hailed from an era before the modern masterpiece aesthetic had been settled on, and would have predated even stuff like Fans Toy's own Quake Wave, so I think potentially might have looked a little outdated by now, if anything, had it not been delayed at the time due to the release of the official MP13 sound Wave. The other cheeky nod you might spot here is the name of the accompanying cassette, showing that the people behind this release have clearly stated their intent on which character this is meant to represent. Cue the gif. <laughs> Joking aside, it really doesn't matter to me whether this is Frenzy or Rumble, especially as the main toy in this case does a good job at representing both the cartoon and the original G1 toy, as evidenced by the back of the box promo shots, alongside that typical Fans Toys character blurb. All of which means I've been tremendously excited to get this figure in hand and see if it's actually worth the nine year wait or not. One thing's for certain, as soon as you get that polystyrene open and start unpacking everything, there's quite a lot going on in this package, with plenty of accessories to pour over before we get going. First up we have the set of batteries which also also turn into Soundwave's main weapons, and a translucent Energon Cube add-on piece for the robot mode chest. As well as the accompanying cassette figure inside a little clear plastic tape box, you also have some tiny little blaster weapons for him too, along with a couple of spare swappable heads, and of course two pile driver accessories to recreate his most iconic attack. Then the rest of the accessories here are all geared around altering the appearance of the main toy to recreate the look of the vintage G1 figure, including a new face design. Then you have two character cards if that's your gem, and finally a set of instructions to help get you started. So all in all this feels like a very comprehensive release, and although there is a bit of a process to go through with getting the robot mode contorted into the correct position right out of the box, once that's done you're ready to start admiring it all. And wow, what else to say right off the bat except how much of a fantastic first impression this thing makes. It may have been a long road to get here, but it's almost immediately impossible not to think it was worth it. He looks absolutely stunning. And I say that as someone who's a majorly big fan of MP13 and still considers it to be a real highlight of the official masterpiece line thus far. But there's just something about Acoustic Wave here that instantly makes me enjoy it, both in terms of the aesthetics on offer, but also the way it handles for the most part. I'm sure it helps that the whole thing feels exceptionally solid and well built, with nice tight joints, clicky ratchets, and a notable heft that can only come from the all too obvious presence of die cast running through the figure. All of which I'm sure is enough to keep the fans toys faithful happy, despite whatever company name is emblazoned on the box. That said, there is a bit of a departure to their norm in terms of the aesthetics. Let's get the obvious point out of the way to start with, as in its default configuration this toy does a stellar job at bringing the animation model of Soundwave to life in 3D form, looking almost like it was ripped out of the cartoon as a result. And a large part of that is evidenced by how different this figure looks to more traditional fans toys designs. The edges are smoother and more rounded, the surfaces are cleaner with less greebles and moulded detailing, and elements such as the hands have clearly been modified to give them a much more animation accurate flavour overall. It's maybe not quite to the level of uber cartoon slavishness that we're seeing from most of Takara Tomy's masterpiece output at the moment, but it's still a shift from where fans toys were, and no mistake. For my money though, I really think it works, especially as it separates this third party attempt from the official MP13 release, with that toy's blended source of influences perhaps being all the more obvious by comparison. You see that cartoony style here in the head design of course, with the proportions of the sculpt all being a really close match to how Soundwave was portrayed 
made in the animation. I'm also a big fan of the pearly white chosen for the face here, and that shiny red eye visor is gorgeous, although I did sadly note a small scratch in mine right out of the box, so that's a shame. Coming further down, I love the gold chrome finish on the chest too, and whilst arguably a matte coat of yellow paint might have looked a smidge more cartoon accurate, I think this really adds something to the finish overall. Of course, then you have the clear plastic window for the cassette deck section, which at the moment looks very naked and somehow makes the toy feel a little unfinished, if anything. Fortunately, that's easily solved with the simple addition of a Toy Hacks decal, which completes the look and makes Acoustic Wave feel like he's more than worthy of joining your Decepticon ranks. That pearly off-white finish can also be found on other areas of the body, alongside little touches such as the shiny red trim on the forearms, and the matte yellow highlights on the knees, all of which I think looks exceptionally good. Then there are elements such as the buttons found on the crotch area, which here are made of metal in a choice that I think also elevates the finish quite a bit, even if it is very hard not to get fingerprints on them. The other thing I really want to highlight here are the feet, which look great and are perhaps the most accurate to the screen representation of Soundwave's clompers that we've seen on any toy thus far, including the official masterpiece. Overall, I think it's a remarkably strong look for this figure, with every aspect, including the gorgeous colour scheme, all adding up to make this a true showstopper in hand. He also handles pretty well, with an impressive array of articulation all told. Some of the joints here are a little on the stiff and unforgiving side, but it's nothing out of the ordinary for a fan's toys product, so if you're familiar with their figures, then you'll know what you're in for at least. The upper body is all really good work, with the hands once again being a bit of a departure from the fan's toys norm. Perhaps my only grumble here is that the thumbs on my copy are a touch loose, if anything. The waist swivel is slightly impeded by the backpack section, but it's usable and there's a welcome ab crunch too. What is less good here are the hip skirts, especially as you really need to move the side flap out of the way first to give the front flap clearance and avoid it being potentially damaged. Strange choice. Still, once they're out of the way, they do allow for a decent amount of range at both the hips and the knees, which go well past 90 degrees and really add to the poseable feel. Anyway, all the articulation on offer here is stellar and makes posing acoustic wave feel like a real pleasure. He's definitely more dynamic than a lot of fans toys bots, and whilst I would recommend that you be careful with a few clearances and stiff joints, on the whole there's a lot of fun to be had, and he looks fantastic. Next, he's literally stacked with gimmicks, not least of which are those battery weapons. One of them pegs into his palm to become his classic hand blaster, whilst the other tabs into a socket on his shoulder and firmly completes the iconic look. It then has a hinge incorporated in, giving it a decent range of motion for posing. The next gimmick on offer is the Energon Cube, which can either be kept as a little standalone box all by itself, or you can remove the one side of it before attaching it over the chest section to mimic the appearance of how Soundwave rather handily made these things during his many cartoon adventures, meaning that it's a simple but very effective accessory overall. Next you have one of the main features on offer here, that being the cassette bot companion that may or may not be Rumble, but definitely is Frenzy, unless it absolutely isn't. In which case, it's probably the other guy. Maybe. Whoever you think this is, the tape mode looks pretty good on the whole, although as is typical of these things, it's distinctly more cassette on one side than the other. It's not far off the same size as an actual micro cassette, which in turn makes it nearly but not quite identical to both the Masterpiece Rumble figure and the G1 Rumble toy, both of which share this lad's colour scheme regardless of who you think it represents. Of course, you can slot it into Acoustic Wave's chest by clicking the button up top, which opens up the cassette deck door. The mechanism feels a touch stiff, but it's an easy enough process to install the cassette snugly in place and close it all back up again after which you'll see a very different look to Acoustic Wave's robot mode. There is also functionality to install a second cassette behind this one, and indeed a separate mechanism involving another switch on the shoulder section that when pulled should activate a little panel on the back of the cassette deck to push it forward. Unfortunately on my copy it seems as though this functionality is completely jammed. When I pull the switch you can see that the panel wants to slide out as it should on the one side, but the opposite part of the mechanism is stuck fast and refuses to budge even if I open up Acoustic Wave's backpack and push hard from that side. I guess it's not the end of the world as I can still install the one cassette, but it's annoying that it doesn't work all the same. Apart from that though, this main gimmick works well, although part of me thinks it's a little bit of a shame that the G1 and Masterpiece cassettes can't fit inside the chest, especially as they're both the same size as one another, and not that far off the fans toys equivalent, so it wouldn't have been such a leap to make it all work. Anyway, the other thing to talk about with this cassette chap is the robot mode of course, which can be easily achieved by taking the toy through a few fairly expected twists and turns during transformation. There's nothing really here to challenge you, although I would recommend a bit of caution 
proportion with how you manoeuvre stuff like the knees and a few other spots all the same. It leaves you with a fairly handsome little lad, who is also boasting a very attractive colour scheme and finish, thanks to the sparkly black, gold and shiny red in operation. Overall, I think he looks really nice, even if there are a couple of real quirks with the design, as we'll see. First things first, you can install his weapons, either on his back to complete his signature look, or you can peg them securely into his non-articulated fists to be used as dual guns. Then you have quite a bit of articulation going on overall, with the legs being the absolute best bit on offer, although I'm perhaps less keen with how hollow they look from the rear, to say nothing of the loose joints going on as well. Not the best. Then there's no waist swivel to speak of, but what is arguably more funky are the arms, mostly because of how they fold down, meaning that there's no bicep rotation of any kind either. You can still bend the arms in several places of course, but something about the design of them leaves them looking a little bit awkward to my eye, like fans toys could have found a better solution for how they were engineered here overall. Of course the other feature with the arms is folding them up to add on those pile driver sections, which similarly to the official masterpiece toy just peg over the side. The pile drivers themselves look really neat and ably recall the presence of the equivalent feature as seen in the Generation 1 cartoon. They also feature a spring-loaded gimmick which can be activated by pushing a button in the side, after which they will freely spring back and forth should you wish, unless you secure them in the locked position again by pushing the button back into place. It's a fairly simple solution on the whole, but it's one that I think still works and delivers the main expected gimmick for this toy in a rather neat fashion. This little guy also comes with those two extra heads which can be used by simply swapping them out at the neck joint. The first option is an open mouthed shouty face that definitely does the job if you fancy something a bit open mouthed and shouty, and the second is a big goofy grin that does feel reminiscent of this character's persona from the cartoon. Sadly my copy of this face has a bit of noticeable paint slop. Ultimately then, this is still a very clever little thing, but somehow feels a little bit disappointing in hand, as the weird arms and spotty QC stop me from feeling that this is the knockout, definitive representation of this character that it had all the potential to be in a masterpiece display. He still stacks up well versus some of the competition mind, and comes in bigger than both the official masterpiece figure and the G1 toy by quite a bit, though of course he's nowhere near as large as Oculamax's alternative offering, so really it's horses for courses as to which of these options works best for your tastes. For my part, I can't help but feel that like the official masterpiece, fans toys take ends up feeling a little bit undersized somehow, even versus the Soundwave figure he comes packaged with, and whilst he is bigger than that Takara Tomy option, I still would have preferred something just a smidge taller to really give him a touch more presence. Still, he's a good looking thing and makes a decent enough addition to this overall package, despite his quirks. And I think if this is the Soundwave that you end up opting for in your display, then you're unlikely to be too disappointed with how they both shake up versus your other masterpiece style Decepticons. After all, with Acoustic Wave nailing the cartoon he looks so hard, he arguably does a better job at slotting in seamlessly next to the more recent interpretations of a lot of the characters, hitting the same notes as stuff like MP36 Megatron and MP52 Starscream in a lot of ways. Equally, he looks on fine form next to any number of masterpiece carbots and the like, again striking all the right cues to make him feel like a suitable stand-in for an anime-styled masterpiece sound wave of sorts. He even does a fantastic job at working alongside the rest of Fans Toys' back catalogue, despite the aesthetic having definitely shifted a little over the years. It's hard for me not to think that this will be the sound wave in a lot of my lineups from now on, which is really exemplified by a direct comparison with MP13 Soundwave of course, showing just how different these two are when you look at them side by side. I should state very clearly for the record that I absolutely love the official toy and still hold it in majorly high regard, but there's little doubt here that purely in terms of aesthetics, the Robot Paradise figure looks significantly more on point with where the official line is heading right now. Should you prefer though, this figure does have another trick up its sleeve, with the addition of the toy style parts, most of which are relatively easy to swap out, although one or two of the default pieces do require a surprising amount of fiddling to remove on your first attempt. Other than that though, it's all fairly simple, with the new pieces snapping into place so purposely that they could have been there from the very beginning. All told, it involves 12 separate parts being removed and replaced with alternatives, meaning that the changes in aesthetic feel quite immediately apparent once you have it all done. And the new look is really worth it, I think, especially for people who really want that toy style vibe from their masterpiece lineup. It's not a stretch to say that it gives this figure an entirely new feel. On that basis, I really like this solution, as it would have been all too easy for fans toys to have simply pumped out a retooled version of the figure and tempt people that way. So the fact that the main release can achieve it is a real bonus for collectors. Get a man who can do both, after all. It also makes Acoustic Wave a natural fit next to the likes of MP36 Plus and other toy style Decepticons, fitting that toyetic look quite perfectly and making me hopeful that we might even see more of this kind of thing moving forward. And of course he looks right at home next to the original 1984 toy that he's now homaging, which needless to say 
Way is an all-time favourite of mine, although this new take certainly does it justice. All told then, there's a lot going on with and even more to love about Acoustic Wave's robot form, but now it's time to check out that transformation to his alternate tape deck mode. Transformation done, and whilst I will say that that wasn't too bad on the whole, the one critique I will throw around is towards the instructions, which totally have you going about this process in a very out of order fashion. That's mostly down to how they require you to begin working on the upper body at the start of transformation, before later coming to twisting the waist around, despite you then not having enough clearance to do so properly because of how the backpack is tucked in. Still, I made my own mistakes too, as you may have clocked that I completely missed folding away the head on first attempt. But hey, we're none of us perfect. Eh? Anyway, on the whole, it's not too challenging a conversion, and everything tabs together very solidly come the end of the process, which is quite satisfying. And it leaves you with this, which, well, it's essentially a blue and white box, but presumably in this case that's what you signed on board for, right? Besides, it's a very neat and tidy box, doing an overall great job at approximating Soundwave's G1 tape deck mode from every angle, with only a few slightly obvious panel seams in the back, and a fairly noticeable hole on the bottom edge, if indeed that's something that you really worry about. Mostly though, this thing looks very impressive, with perhaps my only real genuine grumble being those robot mode shoulder panels that just kind of sit on top there, looking a touch out of place. That aside, it's all good news, and it really does hit the spot visually once you get the little cassette companion in the tape deck door as well. Of course, all of the previous functionality is retained in that regard. You now also have those battery weapons folded up and stowed away in a compartment at the rear, which I have to say is a really neat touch, as this is a gimmick I've always loved on the Generation 1 Soundwave toy, and one that was curiously absent from the official MP13 release. Otherwise, the main buttons on the front are just for show, but there is a little volume control and a slider button on the sides to keep you entertained. Beyond that, he just kind of sits and looks like a box. I mean, what else did you want, really? I guess it is heavy enough to make a good paperweight if you need one. Choking aside, it's about as good an attempt at this tape deck mode as I've ever seen, and even squares up favourably versus the official masterpiece attempt in my opinion, making Acoustic Wave a real contender for the throne overall. I also think it does a nice job alongside KFC's Transistor, at least until fans toys finally get into gear with their own blaster attempt, which is another one that they've been talking about for years. And of course there's also some joy to be had with seeing this thing next to that wonderful G1 sound wave figure, which yet again remains the gold standard for this character in so many ways, although Acoustic Wave is certainly living up to the name. Overall then, it all makes me think that this figure was almost certainly worth the nine years it took to get here, proving once again that at least sometimes the best things really do come to those who wait. Make no mistake, there are some nitpicks to be had along the way, and I do think that the accompanying cassette is a bit of a disappointment, but generally speaking this is a blooming gorgeous toy that almost certainly deserves a spot on a masterpiece shelf. It's a very wholehearted toot.
Now, as already mentioned, you'll find a link to TF Source's site in the video description below, so check them out for all your Transformers and third party needs. There are also links to both my Patreon and my Redbubble store, so be sure to take a look at those if you want to support me in exchange for some awesome perks and merch. Finally, I'd love it if you could drop me a like for today's video, please, and don't forget to let me know your thoughts on this toy. Do you like what you see, or not so sure? Otherwise, that's it from me, so thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. TTFN. Thank <laughs> you.